Well, good morning or good afternoon, whatever it happens to be the time that you're joining us here today. Uh, we are still in the Christmas season, even though it's uh, after the first of the year. And everyone is probably, uh, hopefully, thinking about some New Year's resolution, but um, a resolution that sort of faces us every day is repentance. And repentance is important. In fact, in the, this is in his first sermon, Jesus preached, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So what is repentance? It's clearly the shared message between Jesus and uh, his cousin John. Psalm 51 says it's sacrifice. So it has a part, uh, and it's sacrifice that's acceptable to God is a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. So you've heard the word contrition before. St. Augustine uh, broke it down a little further for us. He says, before God can deliver us from ourselves, okay, so repentance has to do with being saved, we must undeceive ourselves. We must face ourselves. We must look at ourselves truthfully. And that's a hard thing for people to do sometimes, to recognize uh, that they have some sin in their life or whatever. So the essential parts of repentance, then, start with contrition and sorrow. Uh, when you think of it as a confession or recognition of your sin and then the second part is God's action where he delivers us so most of us are really good at seeing the faults in other people and what they need to fix in their life uh, but unfortunately that's judgment isn't it um and Jesus strongly rejects us as judges in Matthew 7. He, in fact, anyone who goes around judging, he calls a hypocrite. He says, take the log out of your own eye, then you can see clearly not to judge, but to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So uh, he turns it right around from judgment to how can we help our brother with his problems. Little sidetrack story here. Little girl sent to her room. She's been misbehaving at school. Mom says she can come out of the room, her room, when she says she's sorry for what she did. Her brother, he just wants to get on with the day and playing, and he walks into her his sister's room, and he's heard saying, just say you're sorry, and you don't need to mean it. Well, he's wrong. You cannot fool mom, and you can't fool God for sure. God knows a broken heart from a lie. And so this little boy recommends piling a lie on top of disobedience at school. And God requires from that psalm we just uh, referenced true remorse. So you can't pray with a sack over your head thinking you can tell God what you think he wants to hear, but think that he doesn't know who's praying or lying to him. We need to confess our sin and recognize that we are the problem and the sinner in repentance. So here are some important points about repentance. We're all the same. We're all sinners. We all need to repent. Repentance is something that God does. And repentance claims Jesus and the forgiveness of sins by faith. So, for us Lutherans in our confession, confessions, there's strictly two parts to repentance. Contrition is that part of us that knows that God hates sin and we know we need to get it out of our life and deal with it. And the second part is the faith that comes from the gospel that believes our sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus and that nothing can separate us 
from his love and his grace and his mercy. So. But in repentance, the end goal is a change in our behavior and getting clear of that sin, turning away from it. And those changes in behavior are motivated by the gospel. And when it comes to things that we do in sanctification, we change from repentance to good works, and good works then are the fruit of repentance that follow the work of God or the, our response to his gospel. So how does God work with us in repentance? Well, it starts with his law. Contrition is the mirror of the law. I know God is angry and grieved by my sin. And so Psalm 38, again, deals with contrition and repentance. My iniquities are over my head like a heavy burden, too heavy for me. We can't fix it. I'm feeble, I'm crushed, and I groan. So in the first part of repentance, we recognize we're lost, we recognize we're a sinner, we can't deal with it, only God can, and that makes us come to the second part of repentance, which is faith, and that faith is created by God, and trust Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins, and in faith that delivers the work of Jesus on the cross to us. And so you can't leave out faith from repentance if you want to be delivered from your sin. It has to include Jesus. So contrition, recognizing our sin, doesn't save us. Good works, the fruit of repentance, doesn't save us. That's where repentance starts, and that's still the work of God through his law, but it's that faith that uh, saves us and then the good works of course immediately follow repentance as a fruit so you can't have repentance if you don't have Jesus and repentance will go wrong if we forget Jesus and faith debating right and wrong that's not repentance repentance starts with God's law I'm a sinner I'm completely lost without a Savior. We have to be changed. We have to be born again, which happens in our baptism. And then we can be absolutely new and forgiven as a child of God. So what happens in repentance? We go back and claim our baptism. Baptism joins us with the death and resurrection of Christ. His death and resurrection was a one-time event. It's complete. He said it's finished. We claim it by faith. And so we know that we're a forgiven child of God, and we can go on. The good thing in our baptism is we put on the robe of righteousness. We put on Christ, and that's what God sees when he sees us as his child, hopefully his repentant child. And so the, our whole journey, our birth journey as a new child of God starts at baptism. That comes from above. Baptism is a work of God. And it continues as we live and uh, live out our baptism as a life of repentance. So thank God, of course, that there's comfort in repentance because it's God's work, not mine. I just screw it up. Um, and God prepares our hearts for Jesus in repentance. And I don't have to worry about whether my repentance is or contrition is good enough for God if it looks to Jesus and if it looks to his free forgiveness by faith. Genuine repentance, then, is contrition and faith guaranteed by God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, there's more joy in heaven 
over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Well, those 99 all need repentance. Repentance sets us free from any guilt about our sin, any doubt that our sins are forgiven because it's not about us. It's what Jesus has done for us. Repentance is the work of God, and repentance is found and based on Christ alone. That's about the good news of God. Till we meet again, we'll see you. I think our next message is going to be a, about a gentleman who had to learn to depend on God and be his servant. So we're going to talk about Moses and the burning bush. Until then, Pastor Ed, we'll see you again.